people, I'm a psychologist and in this video I will analyze why Arya Stark is the one who had to kill the Night King. Many people are very dissatisfied with the episode, mostly because unrealistically many characters survived the great fight and because Arya killed the Night King and this is not what the prophecy stated. I will give you three reasons why she is the one who had to do it. Reason 1. In my former video I explained that there are more layers to a show than just the plot. The murder of Ned Stark is not only a character dying, but it has more functions. His murder sends the message that morality is a disadvantage in this world. He was too straightforward to navigate through the intrigues in King's Landing. Manipulative characters like Peter Baelish on the other hand have influence and stay alive for almost the whole show. So Ned Stark's death pushes the audience into this world where to be honorable is a joke. This creates an inner tension in the viewer. On the one hand, because this is so relatable to our perception of modern high positions as well. The collective belief is that too honest and too good people will not make it in politics or the boardroom. On the other hand, this is counterintuitive and everyone longs for a world in which the decision makers are the best among us and have only the highest good of the people in mind. But what Game of Thrones serves us instead are more dead Starks who represent the high morality. So the tension about the unfairness remains and it's in the nature of tension that it seeks relief. And before turning our attention to Arya, let's have a look at the nature of the tasks. The task of the game for the throne is a fight about power and possessions. Morality loses here and complacency wins. The fight against the Night King, on the other hand, is of other nature. On the plot level, it is an unavoidable fight for the existence of humanity. Let's go back to Arya now. Ned Stark is murdered because he was too noble for the shallow conflicts about power and possessions. Arya is his last child who is able to fight, inherited his morality. And that in this rotten world, in which morality is a disadvantage, the person who saves humanity is the heir of Ned Stark's morality, gives a feeling of deep satisfaction and relieves the tension that had built up over the seven seasons. So we can conclude that Arya closed the circle for the Starks. Second reason. Let's switch to a psychoanalytic interpretation of things. For anyone with any psychoanalytic knowledge, it is pretty striking that the wall stands for the border to subconsciousness. The people of Westeros are living a life full of incest, sadism and complacency. Fears and regrets are bent into the subconsciousness that is represented by the world behind the wall. But as in real life, suppressed emotions have fatal consequences. Arya is one of the characters with the most trauma, since she was still a child when she saw her father's death and all the things she went through to survive. There is a phenomenon called post-traumatic growth. It means that people who suffered from trauma sometimes show that the trauma made them stronger and better people. This is what we can see in Arya. The process that she underwent in the House of Black and White can be seen as some sort of therapy. She had to distance herself from her identity. This is kind of what you do in psychotherapy, when you have to acknowledge your mistakes in behavior and so on. This is as well a painful process in which you leave all dysfunctional elements of your personality behind. But even more than to psychotherapy, the experiences she made in the House of Black and White have similarities to Buddhism and the no-self idea. When going to a Buddhist silence meditation retreat that is often called Vipassana, the tip is given to you to unlearn everything you know and accept the idea that your perception of the I is false. There is no self. Only by living this truth one can become free from suffering. Okay, to come back to the story, who could be more suited to dissolve the dysfunction of the subconsciousness than Arya, who has undergone so much self-experience? A little something I want to add to this second point. Stories like Arya's, where the heroine or hero undergoes the most dreadful experiences to be the hero of the day and the end, 
have some toxicity to them. While it is true that post-traumatic growth exists, it is not a must to put yourself through unbearable challenges to become an important someone. Some people who are inspired by such characters can become reckless and jump into the knife of life but this often ends in hard burnout and trauma and some do not come out of these conditions. I suggest the middle way. Challenge yourself, but be gentle and loving towards your natural limits. Reason 3. That Arya killed the king is a break with conventional storytelling in which John would be the one to kill the king. That Arya killed him suits our time of new feminism. It sends the message that a woman can do anything just as good as a man. make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to not miss my next analysis. Have a nice week and remember that winter is coming, so if you would like to know what you personally can do to stop climate change, follow the link below.